So in my last video, I talked about some very basic physics concepts, uh, and I ended up talking a little bit about both linear algebra and calculus. I figured before the second episode I should make a follow-up video uh, explaining the significance of both linear algebra and calculus in video games. So this video will be on applications of calculus, um, but make sure to check out the video on linear algebra for applications on that as well. Uh, we'll be starting by addressing the most common topics in calculus. Just in case this isn't something you've been exposed to yet, I will be teaching these in the order they're taught. Um, after this, I will go in and explain how each of these topics is important and what kind of problems we can solve. This will not be an in-depth look into the methods used or an educational lecture that teaches these methods. This is meant to act as supplementary material to appropriate coursework and lectures and stuff like that. This is just showing the applications of what you're learning. That means pretty much the first thing you learn when you hop into an introductory calculus class. Um, this is because they are definitely one of the most important. Uh, before I can talk about derivatives and integrals, it is important that we take a moment to build a solid background to base these off of. So without getting into too many additional details, the idea of infinitesimally small numbers is still a rather difficult problem to solve. It turns out that not all functions are continuous. So it is important for us to build a framework to determine whether or not functions are continuous throughout the domain, and at which point is that continuity broken. Not only do they form the basis of calculus, but they can also aid us in analyzing the complexity of our algorithms. So suppose I have the following code. Notice that we loop over the same variable n twice in one section of our code, and in another we only loop over it once. This means that the total time to run our code is the time it takes to loop over n twice, and the time it takes to loop over n once. If we take the limit as n approaches infinity, the resulting time complexity will be bound by the slowest function, in that case that is n squared. Since it approaches infinity faster than the linear term at just n, we call this running time O of n squared, where the O means that this function is the upper bound in our algorithm's running time. Oftentimes, derivatives are introduced right after limits. However, I want to take time to talk about certain functions that are usually introduced in calculus classes that are incredibly important to all corners of math and science. These functions are called transcendental functions. A transcendental function is a function that transcends algebra. What this means in practice is that the function cannot be written as the solution of a polynomial equation. These functions include exponential functions, logarithmic functions, trigonometric and hyperbolic functions, and radicals. These functions are crucial to science. The exponential function and logarithmic function, for example, are incredibly important to how we can model our world because they're everywhere. In fact, trigonometric functions can be written in terms of exponential functions. For example, suppose you wanted to model a pendulum that is being slowed by air resistance. This is a damped harmonic oscillator, and its equation looks something like this with a trigonometric term for oscillation and an exponential term for damping. Logarithmic functions are also very important in computer science for speeding up our programs. If we look at the graph of various time complexities, we can see that a logarithmic time complexity is one of the fastest time complexities we can achieve. Although, the most common default sorting algorithm in programming languages often have a time complexity of O n log n. Python's Tim sort is an example of this. Trigonometric functions also represent repetitive processes. They are important for signal processing and handling audio, as well as modeling anything that is wave-like or anything that changes over time. It is also possible to use trigonometric functions to approximate many other functions, including non-differentiable ones. Time to talk about derivatives, finally. Derivatives are one of the most important pieces of work in mathematics. They are incredibly important mainly because a lot of things change over time. So long as those processes are continuous and differentiable, then we can use derivatives to help solve problems with them. So one of the biggest uses of derivatives is in optimization. That is, we can use the derivative of a function to find critical points, and then we can use a second derivative to identify if those points are maximum or minimum. Another application of derivatives is in approximation algorithms. We can use a derivative to find roots to various differentiable functions with something like Newton's method. In Newton's method, we can iteratively use the derivative to find better and better approximations for a root value by subtracting the previous value of a function over its derivative. The derivative is also helpful for identifying patterns between functions. And a lot of the equations that govern the way the world works are through what are called ordinary and partial differential equations. There are also many different kinds of derivatives including the aforementioned partial derivative. However, there is also the total derivative and even fractional derivatives in complex analysis. Now, this is probably everyone's least favorite part of calculus. 
works. However, it also happens to be the most useful. Integration is the tool that allows us to solve differential equations. Given a description of an object over time, we can work backwards and rebuild that equation that describes its motion. Integration isn't limited to areas under the curve either. If you have a force field for the force on a particle, and we have a path that particle travels inside that field, we can describe the work on that particle as what is called a line integral, which is simply an infinite sum of all the components of the force that acted in the direction of that path. Using integration, we can describe and derive the surface area of any 3D object. This also works for volumes. And we can describe integrals over closed curves in space. We can also use integration to describe the rate at which things flow in and out of some region in space. This is called flux. So the laws of electromagnetism, for example, they can be described purely in terms of both integrals and derivatives. The Laplace and Fourier transforms are both described in terms of indefinite integrals, and these are really important for solving complex differential equations. Computationally, there's an algorithm called the fast Fourier transform that is really crucial for a lot of calculations related to signal processing. And I know I talked a lot about a lot of things in, in this video, and maybe not all of them made sense. However, do keep in mind that this is only meant to expose you to the tools in mathematics that are out there to solve these very complex problems, and specifically tools that require calculus to solve. If you like the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Also, make sure to check out the linear algebra version of this video as well.